Have you ever been through this debate of like choosing the right UI library and which one is actually going to suit your needs? There's tons of them from like InDesign to Shaker UI out there to MUI, Gramit, Elementor UI, Evergreen. Well, in this particular video, you're going to see a brand new UI library that actually brings everything to the table, everything you need with a really, really awesome design and awesome user experience that was literally blowing on Twitter lately. And Vercel themselves actually love that library. So if you're a React developer, you're probably aware that there are hundreds or maybe too many React UI component libraries. And sometimes when you try to learn something new or try to build a new project, and you try to, for example, go through the many different UI libraries that are out there, for example, InDesign, Checker UI, MUI, Gromit, Elemental UI, Evergreen, um, where is this, the React Strap, Bell, all of those and literally more. Those are just like a handful ones, but there's actually literally a lot of them out there on GitHub if you just do the right search. Well, I mean, have you ever found the right one? I mean, I just just for me, I never found the exact right one that just kind of make me absolutely super kind of like productive and customize everything to my needs. Plus, I still use the library, still helps me a lot. The awesome part about this actually allows me to create stuff quickly. Well, we're talking about Redex UI. So if you have been on Twitter for the past couple of, I don't know, weeks, months, you probably have heard about Redix AI or Redix UI, sorry, and how much impact it made on the React community and the UI community in general, and how simple and easy to customize and super like unstyled, accessible, open source React primitive UI component library. And when we talk about Redex UI, we immediately talk about the chat CN UI that actually made a lot of impacts on the React community lately, and particularly on the Next.js community. I mean, if you look at this library in here, just look at the preview and the components already in here, you can immediately tell that, oh, wait a second, this is, this is Vercel's kind of UI design system. It's pretty much a lot familiar with that. And it's pretty simple, pretty nice, and it's super, super easy to use and customize. Plus, it comes with a brand new idea if like, it's not it's not like the traditional UI component library where you just like npm install it and you can use the components out of the box. It's completely different. This one is more of like a copy paste in your own component and customizing it however you want. And the relationship about ShadCN UI and Redex UI is because like ShadCN uses Redex behind the scenes to build its components and actually make it style because Redex, as we've talked about it before in here, Redex is unstyled. So you get like components that are super unstyled and you can style them however you want. And of course, they provide you with themes in here if you ever want to style them or use a different kind of theme for each component, you can easily do that with the themes provider. So if we jump to primitives in here and go to get started, it's going to take us to the documentation. And if you look closer into the documentation in here to read the actual vision of why they made this new UI library versus the rest of UI libraries, the most important part is like the documented by the WAI area. And this technically just stands for the Web Accessibility Initiative for Accessible Rich Internet Applications. I know the name is a little weird, but this document in here is made by the W3 for basically like putting guidelines and best practices on how to build the perfect UI components for usability, easy to use, best user experience, and of course, easy to customize and work with. And of course, the best one for those actually Redix UI actually implements those practices the right way. So inside of the website in here, you're going to find all the patterns for particularly building every single UI component from like alerts to accordions, breadcrumb, uh, buttons, carousels, and so much more like feed, grid, list boxes, and all of those actually, for example, if you click on the link one in here, it's going to give you like exactly what the pattern, what is like the best way to build that one, for example, keyboard interactions to the state and properties that you need to held to have, you know, to build the best UI component out there for a link to like an example in here you could look at and everything. And likely for us, Redix UI actually implements all of those the right way. So that's actually one big reason why a lot of people and developers are super interested in Redix UI. The other really good reason for me as well that I really liked and I found a lot of shitty people on Twitter actually going through this one is actually the ability to only install the components you need instead of just installing the bunch of components. For example, other, any other like React component library, for example, Chakra UI or InDesign, if you go to the getting started in here and you go to, um, I don't know, 
components overview i want i want it to install that one yeah so right here you go to npm install and d and just this is literally just going to install all the components for you like every single component and design is going to be installed for you so you can import them classic stuff for any component library but red x comes with a completely different idea where you can install that particular component instead of installing the all the components inside of the library if you ever need just one component you can just go through in here do npm install red x ui install react accordion and that's it and this is going to install for you just the react accordion you can use it easily and that's simple as that you don't need to actually install all of those only install what you need and actually use what you need and what I like about this one is that, for example, is for example, this hover card in here, when you hover over like an image or a button, it gives you a cool looking card, like a Twitter card. Here, it gives you as well, like the ability to use either Tailwind, Stitches or CSS. And in fact, it's actually gonna give you the exact, like for, for example, the boil print or the code snippet that you can copy with the Tailwind configuration you need in here, for example, for animation, fading animation, everything you need, you can just copy paste it and start working with it. Now, let's talk a little bit about the ShadCN UI. So if you see here, ShadCN is actually a beautifully designed component that you can copy paste and you need to do two lines, underlines inside of like the copy paste part into your application. It's accessible, customizable and open source. And these are very important, but the most important part is the copy pasting part. Now, for a quick preview, this is actually what it would look like if you use the components. This is actually where the component, like for example, a search bar, a calendar, like range selection, a button in here, for example, for downloaded cards, uh, tabs in here, different tabs, for example, uh, for like a selection menu in here or a combo box, uh, tabs in here as well charts maybe tables so you see in here if you just look closely into those they are pretty simple pretty pretty nice looking and i really love this like dark theme plus they also have the light theme in here if you ever want to but i don't think anybody would want a light theme anymore so i i'm a big fan of dark theme in here they're just super nice and it looks super super good and as far as I can tell, and as far as I know, this, the Shatian UI you see in here, or here particularly, was completely like inspired by the Versal design system. But excuse me, here, this is actually where on Versal.com. And excuse me, the design system in here is a lot similar to the Shatian. So it was like heavily inspired by that because the Versal has one of the best UIs out there for like, you know, accessibility, usability, and how you can easily use that one. So this, it was, it was hugely inspired by that. And in fact, the CEO of, and in fact, Versal's CEO himself actually made a statement on his Twitter account for how cool the chat CN UI was actually is and, and the library itself in general and how cool it is and actually how people started to use that and how people started to ship new apps actually faster things to the chat CN UI ever seen before, particularly in Versal and with Next.js. So let's try to get started with ShadCN and see how you can actually install it and use the components and all the configuration needed and how it actually works without actually installing it through NPM and what we mean by copy pasting. So first things first, let's go through like get started. And here in the introduction, actually they states everything you need to know about the library and how is it like copy pasting instead of like installing through NPM. I like what you particularly mean by not a component library in this case. And you know, all the information here, I really recommend you guys go through and actually read through this everything because it really is good and it just gives you all of the idea you basically need. So we go through installation in here, it's gonna tell you, oh, which framework it supports a lot of them. Of course, for us, it's gonna be Next.js because we're React lovers, so Next.js. And here you first need to actually create your Next.js like projects and make sure to use Tailwind and TypeScript because those are the best. And particularly make sure you use Tailwind because like ShadCN relies on the Tailwind stuff. So make sure you do that. Then you actually gonna go through and actually run the ShadCN UI CLI. And this is one of the most important parts. I'm just gonna go copy, I'm gonna use BMPM. You can use Yarn or NPM. So I'm gonna head over back here, click BMPM, ShadCN UI, init. And it's actually gonna start the initialization for us. Of course, it's gonna grab everything from like, you know, the registry and try to create some configuration, Tailwind configuration, and replace everything you need. And it's gonna actually start asking you, would you like to use TypeScript? Yes, um, we'd like to use default or the New York style because there is actually two different styles. I'm gonna stick with the default, it looks pretty good. And here you actually use the base color theme with your slate, gray, zinc, neutral, or stone. Um, yeah, I can just go through the gray in here, I think it's pretty good. Now you actually tell it where your globals.css is, and if you go to like public 
or I think mine is in the app, yeah, so app.globals.css. By default, it actually recognizes that. Would you like to use CS variables? Yes, tailwind config located, yes, it's actually in, in the root folder. So I'm gonna put that one in here and you're gonna configure the import alias for components. I'm just gonna leave it compo or like ads for slash components and utilities in here. It's gonna create a new folder for us. It's gonna put some utilities that could actually need to use like for merging classes and merging tailwind classes and stuff. So I'm gonna choose that location and am I using actually server components? Yes, of course, because I'm using the new app directory. And it's gonna finally write the configuration we put in here into like components.json. So I'm gonna just hit yes. It's gonna start the initialization. It's gonna create everything for us. And there you go. So actually in the tailwind config in here, you're gonna find everything from like the colors, uh, the CSS variables in here. And if you head over to globals.css, you're gonna find all the CSS variables in here have been put together to actually form the actual theme you're gonna be using. And inside of component.json in here, you're gonna find your component configuration. And just like this, you're actually good to go. You have that configured. If you head over, down a little bit in here, it's gonna actually explain to you the folder structure that it uses by default. You can change that, of course. But by default, it puts component folder inside of it. It puts the primitive sort of like components that it uses. Those components are actually in the Shatsian components. So whenever you copy paste or actually use a CLI to grab this component, it's gonna be by default put inside of like components for slash UI folder. And other components in here you need, for example, main navigation or like composite component, not base component, they're gonna be put inside of the root components folder. And last point is in here, you're gonna have, of course, a lib folder in here that has all the utility classes inside of utils.typescript. And that's it. The final part to add any component from the components that are available in here from like accordion, alerts, calendar, button, anything. You just use this command in here, mpx, chatsian, UI, you do add and you specify which component you wanna add in here. Of course, you can copy the command. I'm gonna copy it to pmpm. So if we head over back over here, let me just, just extract this one, pmpm, like add button. So it's gonna ask you, oh, do you wanna proceed and actually install the components with its dependencies? It's gonna install the button. And if you notice in here on the like left-hand side inside of components, UI folder, you're gonna find a new file that was added. See in here, that's what I mean by copy pasting. It's like copy pasting that button from the chat CN UI like library right into your projects. Now the button component here becomes part of your project. It's, it doesn't exist inside of the node modules. It's not like a library that was inside of installed like inside of a node modules that you need to update. Rather than that, it actually is a file as part of the project and you can customize it. You can change whatever you want to do in here. It's because it's like a normal like UI component here, like a normal React component, particularly that has some like variants in here using Tailwind. And if you just go down in here, like extends some Reacts, burn HTML like attributes, and it does some logic in here for the rendering part. And of course, if you notice this behind the scenes or under the hood, it uses the Redix UI and it's is actually what it is using to build the actual component. Now, of course, if you go to documentation here, we can look at the button in here. We see like, you know, different styles of the button from like the New York style to the default style, like how you install it as we did before and the usage of the button in here and the different stuff that you can use. For example, there's actually another variant of the button if you're using a link and it actually gives you different examples in here to run through like the variants, like the secondary, destructive, outline, ghost, link, like an actual link in here with an icon or like an icon and a text in here or the laid, like loading state. And literally the same thing happens for every every single other component. For example, for the calendar, if you go to the calendar and if you go down here, you're gonna find like the usage, how to use it. You can copy the code, of course. And literally the same thing ha works for every single other component. Now this way, you don't need to install all the components. You already copy paste each component whenever you need it. And it actually becomes part of your project. So you can commit the component or commit the changes you made to the component with the rest of the code base and customize it however you want, change colors, change behaviors, add into it, remove some functionalities from it. Like you can literally do whatever you want from it. It's just like a template you start from and you can build up on top of it which is what made the Shatsian UI actually blew up recently and a lot of people started using it. And plus, the UI components in here are super, super nice. So I tried to pick up Shatsian UI and actually build a small dashboard in here that is 
looking super nice actually in front of you in here it's good to see the dashboard looks super super amazing you've got like a bunch of cards in here you can actually you know have some info on like active users sales subscriptions uh, for example in here an overview in here with a really nice chart that actually is super animated and works really well and uh, for example for this one is actually a table that actually lists all the invoices that you have paid or not uh, status in here and stuff like that and I actually literally built that one in, in more of like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I was able to build this and put this dashboard together using this chat CN UI because it was super simple and it, all I had to do is actually copy paste some component and it was just literally there. And for example, I added this like tabs where you can see overview, sales, maybe reports, notifications. Uh, for example, for the sales in here, it actually tells you or gives you a chart of different sales and the recent invoices or recent sales from different people in here, like uh, Olivia Martin or like Nadia in here or John. And it's good to see it, the UI looks pretty incredible. Plus, I was able to put the code in, in a really short amount of time. So this is actually the page. This is the dashboard, page.tsx. And literally, this is the page. I was just able to go through and actually every single component in here, like import the component, for example, the card. I imported the card stuff in here, the button, the image in here from Next.js, like custom component, for example, with Sears chart. For example, it's outside of the UI in here. So it's not a primitive base component, but it's more of like a composite component that actually renders the sales chart. But I really, really like the flexibility that Shatsian actually gives you and how you can easily build that. And plus, since it uses Red X UI, everything is super primitive and super easy and you can customize it however you want. You can like literally go inside of the UI in here, go inside, for example, the calendar component. You can customize like how it looks in here using this Tailwind classes or the different variants or the day picker in here from the React day picker. Everything is well put together. So for example, here, let's say we want to add like the customers, a new tab in here. And that tab is actually just for seeing the new customers that are actually coming and through the dashboard and just see analytics about these new customers for our business. So if you go back in here, go to the page.tsx, and it's actually literally the main uh, page for the dashboard. So I can go through, um, I think there is this, uh, where is that? So if I go down in here, if like this is report notifications, there's actually the tabs. So it's clearly in here, tabs, and then tabs list. So here I can rename this to like uh, customers. And I can remove this from disable. I can literally just remove this and make this customers as well. And there's this uh, tabs contents for each tab. So I can just go a little up in here. This is actually the sales tab. I'm going to go down in here. I'm going to put a new tabs contents for a different tab, which is going to be the customers tab. I put the value in here for customers. So it knows exactly which tab this one actually belongs to. And here, for example, you can do, oh, uh, customers. Oh, this is actually the, I think this is literally the sales chart. So I can go inside of the sales chart in here. For example, let's say when I have like a bar chart for showing the number of customers that were incoming in the past, I don't know, year or maybe a couple of months or something like that. So I can go through components in here outside of the UI. And that's actually a little better because it's actually a composite component. I can put, uh, for example, recent or recent customers and I can do index.tsx. I can, um, yeah, I can do this like the recent customers, for example, the sales chart. So I can rename this to recent customers and I can remove that. Now I can remove this because this is actually the line chart. I don't need the line chart anymore. I want to use the bar chart. I have this this code commented in here for using with three charts, which basically give you the, you know, the bar chart and it's because it uses bar chart. It gives you some fake data in here um, and it uses three charts, of course. And right over here, we just put in some X axis and Y axis. Now back to the page in here for the customers tab, I can do um, recent customers, I can import that. Now if I go back in here, so see, as quickly as that, I can just refresh the page. And here we have a new tab, so called customers, you click on it, as you see, immediately just showcases that as you see, this chart in here it looks pretty nice with a really nice animation, uh, it looks really, really good. As you see, like in just like two minutes or, or less, literally I was able to build that one. And of course you can do a lot more if you just go to the chat CN in here and you choose for example, like a, a dialogue, let's say you wanna have a dialogue for our stuff in here, just like an alert or something. As you see, you can easily copy the dialogue in here by just going through either the code, just to copy that particular example, or first make sure to go through and actually install that one using the CLI of course, or you can manually install one that one by just copy pasting this. And it will be too easily just integrate that one without any issues. 
And that's it. This actually sets you in with Redix UI and what is actually the best React UI component library right now that you can actually use and build components or pages and applications with super easily and super quickly. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and catch you all hopefully in the next ones.